I next want to do an inchworm creature that goes from a, an elongated position to a position that goes high and then moves forward back into an elongated position. I do this with a shape I like to call um, the hourglass. This hourglass is a key shape in uh, moving mass temporarily into one position and then to another. Um, for the inchworm, that's what it does. It's actually quite useful in um, the swimmers uh, using arm motions that swimmers use as well. That's for a later time. I did want to say a couple things about the hourglass that you could do a straight hourglass which would simply mean that the mass of that the inchworm would be perhaps just moving back and forth mechanically not really moving forward that's what this shape would do it would be as if I had um, sculpted a, a, a mountain at the top and two wings that go off either side and it would look something like this this is a sort of classic hourglass the idea is to move volume up and down, cutting it this direction over time. That's what that is. Um, what I'm doing is trying to move that shape in a certain direction, and so we slant that hourglass like this, and the mass that rises to a peak, here's the two peaks, the mountains, the mountains are right here, and they rise up, but this allows the mass to move from here to this position instead of just staying all in one spot. Now that you understand the principle of this hourglass shape, I'm going to show you how I would think about a, uh, a uh, inchworm. Um, what's going on here is this is the plan for where the inchworm's body is going to be. It will, let's say the blue color, the turquoise color, will be the uh, invisible background like a blue screen color. Uh, the inchworm will start here in a sense as a slice, as a, as a line. He's going to start uh, here as a line. That'll be one frame of an inchworm if I were to slice him. Another frame as he moves through, another slice would be here. And what you can see is going on is the mountain is pulling the inchworm up into its pinched position, but the distance between these two points now is much more contracted, and yet the length is the same. Um, to stretch out a piece of, if I were to lay this piece of orange, for example, over this clay, it would push down and distort against the already made uh, negative shapes that the inchworm needs to move along its path. So I made a very quick crude sculpy shape um, and this also illustrates the point of how the volume of what is taken up changes the shape to become it's going to be very similar to this outline that I already have basically uh, this is a motion until here while um, while this should be almost not moving it should be actually like this and then it begins to move here while this is static. See how these things are supposed to line up? Then um, there's this moment where uh, the forward momentum comes to a stop here when uh, it should actually be about right here, right at this gap. When this, um, let's turn it this way so you can see a little better. When this, this is the, where it begins to pull up, right? Right here as you're cutting along this axis. Like there, chop, chop, chop. It begins to pull up here, which means the tail is being pulled forward, but the head really isn't. And so it should actually not begin to move until about right here. That's when this side takes over and the tail stops moving right here but the head starts to push forward and so 
um, this is the correct line right there, not that. I don't know if that's clear. Uh, let me draw that one more time. Uh, on the next inchworm motion, this is the tail. It moves forward. This is the head, and it shouldn't really start moving until about right there. And it should stop right here. It should go nowhere till about right here, and then it should move forward again till about right there. And, the, and on the back side, it should move forward to here, stop, go nowhere till about there, and then start to move forward again. Because it's being dragged, the mass is being dragged or, or sucked in behind it as the inchworm makes its uh, inch shape like that. It's uh, in a sense, pushing the back end, it, it, it's, uh, it's, yeah, it's like that. It's pulling its back end forward. The whole inch shape is to pull the back end forward and then to push the front end out. That's actually what this animation is trying to achieve. All right, now that we know the concept, this is a strong, it's a slightly oversized version, and the reason I did that was because I'm trying to press, a, I tried to make a press mold if you were just to lay the sheet down over this hourglass, this advanced, I'll call it a slanted or advanced hourglass shape. It's not uh, designed to be a uh, straight motion. It's designed to be to make the inchworm move forward. You can see just by pressing down this uh, hourglass shape is almost already made. Uh, it's already made much of the motion that you see in, in on this diagram. It's not perfect, it's sort of rough, but you can see how it's pulling the volume shapes to be in a certain position. Uh, when I take this out, what it does is it allows these blue clay pieces now not to have any pressure on them when I form them. And that is just a way, it's a method for pre-distressing a a shape like this that allows it not to be by hand. Now I've, I've worked on this one roughly in order to show you these have already been pre-stressed. I've already put this mold piece into this clay and now it will lay down on these shapes a little bit better. This was the conceptual framework. It won't be exact. I'm going to actually use that concept as I play these, place these in. So they go into each, into each uh, pocket like that, and um, so when we turn it over, um, this is what results. Um, now I have to go back in and attempt to take this concept of this idea and, and apply it now to this new somewhat elongated version of the same idea. Um, also, these mountain caps got pretty thin. They got sort of stretched out, so I'm going to add a little bit more clay on top of these mountains so they don't have to um, uh, they don't have to become pencil or paper thin. They can be roughly the same volume as uh, the rest of the inchworm's body. He's an orange inchworm because it shows up well. Again, this is mostly for concept. This wouldn't be how I would probably design something if I was looking for the proper color and the proper everything. So um, I'm going to have to cut this away to you have to imagine the invisible hourglass shapes now are underneath here. And I'm going to cut this away to try to take the motion. So it's, it's kind of naturally outlined, actually, um, where it wants to go. It doesn't want to move there, but it does want to move here. It wants to stop. It wants to stop right there. And then it wants to move here. And it wants to stop. All right. Um, you have to imagine that I'm trying to animate chop, 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 that direction. I'm going to turn it around try to show you maybe more clearly to the camera how I I would try to get the motion 
this this motion feels like it needs to be a little bit pushed up on each one of these. A little bit pushed up because this dragging part needs to come from a position of rest. This is rest and then this is motion and it has to be dragged, the volume of the tail of the inchworm has to be dragged up like there, come to a stop just about the time that this begins to move. You can see what you're doing is drawing a line across it and this stops moving while this starts to move. That's really the trick to having the inchworm start off here, move to there, start up here, move to here, and then move back. So he's going to make this kind of forward progress about uh, three-quarters of an inch every frame, every time he does a uh, position change. So this is static, static, about right here, it starts to move. Yeah, it gets a little tight right there, so. Um, there. And here. I'm going to, again, drag the tail. The idea is that the tail um, moves when this starts to move about right here. You can see that this is starting to pull the volume of the inchworm shape up. Um, and it should be straight. Countering that, this has to wait until it's done moving and then move up. Um, this is starting to look a little more clear now. Um, and I'm going to try to finish it out with one more little point right here. And one more there. Inchworm comes to a stop there. Um, and finishes out here. Now you can see I've added a little bit of shape along the way. I'm going to lean this up. It's not identical to this because it's been stretched out a little bit more, but I was using the principle of it to... So these are the hourglass shapes underneath. This is sort of how it lays down. You can kind of see how the idea again is that once it stops moving in one direction, it stops here, it will start moving here and then this comes to a stop, then there's no motion for a brief time, this begins to move again, and then when it comes to a stop here, you go across the mountain and it begins to move on this side. That's the inchworm head and the tail. Um, this would be the way I would cut it up. Clip, clip, clip it. One last thing before we leave inchworm and the hourglass shape, which would come back, it comes, these shapes come back as key keystone ideas uh, throughout different strata cut pieces, is I want to put some counter motion on it because the orange is there for an example, but it's fairly dull. So I'm going to slice up some, um, some stripes and allow the stripes to lay on top of the orange. And it's going to create a counter motion. So it'll create a kind of interesting um, uh, extra backwards motion, if you will, or design motion that adds a little more interest to watching the whole process of the inchworm move forward. It's one of the things that in Stratica you love to do, um, put some, some of what Stratica does well, you know, put a lot of shape and a lot of color and volume and firepower uh, into a simple shape. So these pieces, I'm going to lay at an angle across the um, inchworm and that will allow me to cut up. You'll have one motion where the inchworms are going forward and have a counter motion where the lines are going backward. Um, so, let me lay it in. I'm going to lay it over and then trim it out and then take some of the trim and reuse that trim on some of the other parts. Um, Again, I'm only doing this because it makes it, uh, here, I'm going to put the blue this way, because it, I'm trying to keep the, well, no, I want to do it this way. You want to keep alternating uh, magenta to blue, so there's no blue on blue. 
Okay. That's good. I'm going to flip it over, take a look at it, and then trim off the parts that don't need to be um, there. And this will create more material that I'll use in other parts of the to finish up the rest of the inchworm. Alright, that's trimmed. I'm going to trim these off as well. This side. I think I can do the rest from the top. It's a little easier to put pressure on it from the top to get these tiny bits. Now I have this extra material. It'll be fun to reuse it to finish out the process and not need to cut that much more. I don't need to throw away perfectly good texture. Um, this little piece needs to be sort of, I'm going to hodge it, just put a little kludge piece in there just so the texture, even though it's not, it'll have a bit of an interrupt on the animation, it's not that significant. Um, I will go ahead and cut a couple more slices so I have enough to cover it. One more may do. It lays over. And then um, this slice. This is where it really gets hodgy, as I like to say, because it, it isn't going to be uh, perfect texture, but it gets the job done, and I don't want to waste. It's a way of not wasting the rest of this block. I can use it in another, in a, as a pristine bit of texture somewhere else. Um, all right. That's all done. And uh, I could trim this out a little bit more. This puppy is very close to being ready. And the beauty of putting this texture on top is now there's a counter motion to the inchworm shape and it just adds a little bit more varied uh, visual interest to what's a basic idea of motion but wouldn't be that uh, fascinating to watch and again these textures are very fast to do they make a lot of fun and this would be this one that's cut up will be an orange inchworm with a sort of uh, pink and uh, magenta blue and white and black stripe pattern going across it and that'll be counter to the motion the inchworm's going forward but the motion of the stripes are going back against it